welcome. Uh, before this, we have learned about the various types of cooling techniques and based on the expansion valve and the expansion engine and then we moved on to the applications of these techniques to the simple Lin uh, refrigeration and liquefaction cycle based on the linde hampson method. Now, as I told you last time that those have some restrictions that is that the, the liquefaction cannot be used for the hydrogen, helium, neon, etc. And there are some other uh, restrictions based on the liquid yield. So, to improve upon the system performance, another modification has been done on this simple Linde Hampson and those things we are going to learn in this particular lecture. So, in this lecture, we shall be learning about the pre cooled Linde Hampson refrigeration system and pre cooled Linde Hampson liquefaction system. So, first let us see the pre cooled Linde Hampson refrigeration. Now, in this thing, we find that uh, as I told you that this is a modification done to the simple Linde Hampson in order to achieve a lower temperature than what we can achieve using the liquid nitrogen. And here the generally the working fluids or the what we are neon, hydrogen and helium which are what we call that is pre coolant that means they will pre cooling the particular actual process fluid and this pre cooling is done why because we are not using any expansion engine. Had we been using expansion engine, then we would not have needed this kind of pre-cooling. Now, if we assume that the pressure drops are negligible and all these things, we can also achieve an ideal uh, cycle. Now, first let us understand this cycle. Here we have, you see there are two systems here. One is the main system and another is the pre-cooling system. So, first let us look at the main system. In this main system, again we have a compressor and this compressor we are doing some work W1 uh, and then from this compressor, this is particular gas which is going inside the compressor and this gas is compressed. Uh, ideally, we are doing it isothermally so that we are rejecting some amount of heat Q1 and then this is coming into the system and from point 2 to 3, it is exchanging the heat to get cool down and this is done from the return stream from the uh, liquid reservoir and then it is getting cooled down. Now, what, what we are doing that here we are applying the further cooling. So, here this particular cooling is being done by another system. This system looks the same as the single, simple Linde Hampson. The only thing is this, this gas is passing through this liquid reservoir for this auxiliary system. So, we will come to this later. First, let us see that it is further cooled and then after this again it is taken to another heat exchanger for still more cooling and that is why we are finding that from uh, point 2 up to this thing up to the expansion valve there is series of cooling been done ultimately uh, taking it to the expansion valve where it is being expanded isenthalpically and so that we are getting a two phase mixture that is a liquid and a the gas. Now, we find this is evaporator and this evaporator is taking the heat from the refrigerated space to get uh, the phase change from the liquid and again as we uh, learned earlier, this kind of a heat source is can be called as isothermal heat source. Now, once the vapor is generated, it is taken back into the system, again is going through the heat exchanger to uh, get heat. Uh, heated up by the incoming uh, gas and it is now this particular thing is not going through this, this particular auxiliary thing because here we are not trying to cool it down because so we want to heat it up. So, we are not taking this stream into this uh, evaporator, it is going out and is going to the other heat exchanger and to get uh, still further heated up by the incoming stream and ultimately it reaches the state 1 ideally where we see that it is attaining the same temperature as the inlet temperature of the compressor. So, this is the main uh, circuit for the uh, refrigeration. Now, the as I said we are using an auxiliary circuit and here we have the same simple Linde Hansen kind. Here also we are using the precoolant 
and that is now the precoolant is undergoing the same process that it is going for going under compression and here we have shown some work W 2 is being used and this is getting compressed and here we are rejecting some amount of heat Q 2 and then it is here it is going to a state B and state A is the inlet state and the state B is the outlet state of the compressor and we have to remember that T A is equal to T B whereas, the uh, pressure at A is less than the pressure at B. Now, after compression it goes to the uh, cooler and again here in this the cooling is being done from the return stream from the evaporator and there is a isenthalpic valve again the state is changing from state C to state B where the pressure is reducing and temperature is also reducing. So, that we are getting a two phase mixture and the two phase mixture the this mixture is taking the heat from the main line and then the vapor is generated and it is going back to the compressor uh, through the through the heat exchanger to attain the same temperature as the inlet temperature of the compressor. So, we are finding that we are now using an auxiliary system to get the pre cooling and we will find that if we apply the first law of thermodynamics assuming that there is negligible change in the kinetic and potential energies and we assume that there is no change in the uh, pressure pressure during this flow. So, with these assumptions and there is no um, heat leakage from the ambient. So, under these assumptions we can find out from the applying first law of thermodynamics the expression for the Q and this Q and this is a Q, Q here and this Q is dependent also you see that first term is same as the one we have got in the symbol in the Hamsum only the, this is the thing additional is this term and in this term this particular m p dot it represents the flow rate of the pre coolant. Okay. So, this is how in this H a and H b are the enthalpies at this point a and point b. So, we find this is the only additional term which is coming for the pre cooling. And here we try to rearrange the equation and we put that we define another uh, term what we call the pre coolant mass flow ratio and that is the ratio of the pre coolant mass flow rate to the total uh, mass total mass flow rate in the main system. So, we put the uh, Q by m that is the um, heat removed per unit mass of the actual fluid process fluid as this particular term and with respect to z and we see that if we want to achieve lower and lower temperature we can use multiple cascades that means we have not only one auxiliary system we can use another auxiliary system to still get further cooling. Now, if I want to represent this whole process on this T s diagram what we shall see the basic system remains almost similar to the simple Linde Hampson we find that the if you look at the overall system it goes undergoes an isothermal uh, pressurization and there is a isobaric cooling and to some point and there is a isenthalpic uh, expansion that causes the two phase formation and the it is goes to the original temperature at the inlet temperature of the particular uh, compressor and then it is again heated back to the inlet condition of the compressor only difference from the um, uh, simple in the is this in between we are doing some kind of pre cooling this point 3 4 and 7 if we go back to this thing we find this point 3 4 is giving the further cooling and because it is isobaric. So, it is lying on the same isobaric line and this point 7 is the point where we are finding that it is getting again heated up. So, we find that in this is isobaric also and this this pressure is taken to be the pressure as the same as the inlet pressure of the compressor. So, that is why this point 7 is lying on this inlet pressure and this point 4 and 3 are lying on this particular uh, uh, exit pressure of the compressor and here we are finding that this point 4 and 7 are almost having the same temperature that is we find that this temperature and this temperature that means totally balanced um, heat exchange is occurring. So, that this temperature and this temperature ideally are the same. So, that is why we are finding that this 4 and 7 are ideally at the same temperature. So, this is these are only modifications by introducing this point 3, 4 and 7 
to the simple Zinder Hampson system to get the uh, T s representation of the pre cooled Zinder Hampson refrigeration system. And we can attain uh, lower temperature by using multiple cascades and those cascades may be we can use one, uh, one auxiliary system with nitrogen or argon, then second one we can use hydrogen or neon and the third one can be helium. So, we can see that we can extend it up to three more uh, three stages means from starting from nitrogen or uh, argon then I can add hydrogen or neon and, and that will be helium. So, that is the how we can go up to these three stages for the pre cooled refrigeration system. Now, we go to the pre cooled Linde Hampson liquefaction and again we will find the basic system remains the same as that for the uh, pre cooled uh, refrigeration. So, here first we see that why do we need it? We are needing it because we want to increase the liquid yield because in liquefaction we are concerned about the yield, in the refrigeration we are concerned about the cooling. So, we want to increase the yield beyond what we got in the simple Linde Hampson system. And here we are not working with any of the cryogens, the here the working fluids or the precoolants are something like the carbon dioxide, ammonia or some freon. And in this also we have to figure out see that the critical temperatures must be above the ambient temperature as I told earlier because if it is not so then we will not be able to get the phase change. Okay. So, the critical temperatures must be above the ambient temperature so that the refrigeration can be obtained by condensing the refrigerant by exchanging heat with the atmosphere or cooling water at ambient temperature. So, we want to minimize the uh, utilization of any other external source of cooling. Okay. So, we want to utilize only the ambient air, the ambient water and so that for that we want to make sure that the critical temperature is above the ambient temperature. Now, first let us understand this whole process. Again we see that as per the pre-cooled pre uh, Linde Hampson refrigeration, here also we find that this is the main circuit. In this main circuit what is happening? The gas is going in the compressor, it is compressed isothermally and so that we are rejecting some amount of heat here and then this is going into the uh, uh, heat exchanger and then it is getting cooled down and it is getting further cooled down in another heat exchanger before it is going to the JT valve and here we are getting the two phase system. This is a liquid reservoir from which we are withdrawing some amount of the liquid and the vapor which is formed it is going back to the circuit and going passing through these two heat exchangers. It is exchanging heat with this incoming uh, gas and it is getting heated up and this uh, and then it is going to the another heat exchanger it is getting further heated up and ultimately it is going into the inlet of the compressor. Now, here we can uh, see that here typically it is shown that instead of a two channel heat exchanger we are using a three channel heat exchanger and this three th third, uh, third uh, uh, stream in this uh, three channel heat exchanger is coming from the auxiliary refrigerant system. So, here we are using this refrigerant system which is again based on a simple Linde Hampson system uh, and what is happening here we are using this refrigerant and this refrigerant is uh, helping to cool this particular uh, process stream further and here it is going through this cycle and as I was telling you that here we are trying to use the cooling water or from the ambient or the ambient air to cool down this refrigerant. Okay. So, in this we are not uh, trying to reduce our cost of refrigeration and here again we have the JT valve and we are getting this cooling and please understand this, this cooling may be that you can imagine that this particular thing is representing a uh, the liquid uh, reservoir. Okay. So, the, here we are showing by the three, uh, three channel heat exchanger. Now, here we find that again we are doing some work uh, in the auxiliary system and one more thing to be noted is this that because uh, this some amount of liquid is withdrawn and that is about m dot f. So, the resultant flow rate mass flow rate in the vapor will be total flow rate that is m dot and minus m f. So, that is that much um, flow rate is coming. So, here we find that the mass flow rate is m dot minus m f dot 
and this mf dot will be have to be supplied by putting this makeup gas. So, that is how we are running this pre cooled Linde Hampson liquefaction system. Now, there are some restrictions the restriction is this the temperatures at point 3 and 6 that is point 3 is this point and point 6 this point. Now, ideally this point 3 and 6 are almost the same ideally. Now, these two temperatures cannot be lower than the boiling point of refrigerant that is the reference coming from here. So, naturally you can see that they cannot be lower because if they become lower then there will be a reverse heat exchange means that means as if the heat is going from a lower temperature to the higher temperature and that is not possible Therm uh, second law of thermodynamics says it is not possible to transfer the heat from the lower to higher temperature without any external work done and since here we are not doing any kind of work on the system. So, we must ensure that the uh, this temperature 3 and 6 cannot go uh, below the temperature at the point D. Okay. So, then the, there will not be any kind of evaporation of this precoolant. So, that is the restriction on this particular system. And uh, we can represent it on the T S diagram it is again similar to the one we have just studied uh, for the um, refrigeration system uh, using the pre cooled in the Hampson. <coughs> again this is the main circuit that is the main one it is going to 1 to 2 and then it is going to point 3 uh, and the point 3 and point 6 are ideally balanced. So, that they have the same temperature and as we say that at the limit the it can be attained the refrigerated boiling temperature point that is the, um, uh, the limit and then it goes to further cooling and it is getting uh, cooled and then isenthalpically it is getting expanded in the expansion valve we are getting liquid uh, getting vapor the vapor is sent back to the compressor to the heat exchanger and to the inlet com condition of the compressor. So, this is how we are carrying out the liquefaction in a pre cooled Lindhamson system here the other things we have uh, this work done and the heat rejected will be the same only additional thing will be in this case will be the liquid yield and in this case we find this is the expression if, if we apply the first law of thermodynamics uh, to the system we can see that this will be the uh, expression for the yield. And here if you lo look at you find that the first term the first term is same as the one which you are finding in the simple Linde Hampson. The additional thing is this particular term and in this term we have some r which is the refrigerant mass flow ratio. It is similar to the pre coolant mass flow ratio in the pre cooled Linde Hampson refrigeration. So, here we are getting this sorry this will be liquefaction system correction. So, we find this ratio if we see then this ratio is also determining the liquid that means if we increase this ratio that means if I increase the, the flow rate of this MR in the secondary circuit the auxiliary circuit we can increase the liquid uh, yield. So, there is we need not play with the temperatures as we found that in the uh, simple in the Hampson there is a restriction on the temperature to be attained, but here we can play with the uh, this R to increase the uh, liquid yield and so much so that it can also move towards 100 percent liquid yield. Okay, the 100 percent means the all of the incoming gas is liquefied fully. Now, we find that when we um, see this thing that here we find if we plot the yield versus this R and for different pressures we find that the with the increase in the R we find the yield is increasing. Okay. So, and this is given for the nitrogen at 1 atmosphere and 70 degree Fahrenheit. So, this is this particular plot shows that how the liquid yield is affected by the uh, refrigerant mass flow ratio. So, that is how we find that as I told you the restrictions on the uh, temperatures at point 3 and 6 that is they cannot be below the boiling point of the uh, refrigerant. So, that can be overcome by increasing the R, but there is also a restriction on how much um, flow rate can be increased for the uh, precoolant and we find that if we increase the uh, flow rate of the precoolant what we find that there the uh, it will not get enough time to get vaporized. That means, at point D if you look at this point at point D we will not be able to get the full vaporization of the 
uh, refrigerant. And if there is not a full vaporization, what will happen? At this point A, we will find that we will get a two phase mixture. And two phase mixture means some of the liquid will also be going out from this thing. And if some liquid goes out, that is not desirable for the compressors because compressors have uh, generally are um, uh, having those blades. So, we do not want to use any kind of liquid in the compressor. So, um, we cannot indefinitely increase the refrigerant flow rate in this circuit to increase the liquid yield. So, this is the restriction that uh, why we cannot go for high amount of um, refrigerant flow. And so, we find the maximum uh, yield that is possible will be given by this particular thing that H 6 minus H 3 by H 6. That means, this is the um, thing we can find from here that this two things, these two temperatures are determining that how much will be the maximum yield we can get from this particular system. And uh, if we consider the work, this is the work requirement here and we will find that in this case the work requirement is found from two things that first that we are saying the main compressor is compressing it uh, uh, isothermally whereas the auxiliary compressor is doing it isentropically. So, these are the um, things. So, in this case we find that this particular term if you look at these two terms these are the same as in case of the simple Lindhamson only additional term is coming through this one. Okay. Now, we find that if I look at the uh, total work done per unit mass of the gas flowing to the system, it is getting increased. Now, if it is increased on the one hand, we are increasing the liquid yield, on the other hand, we are also getting it at the penalty of the work. So, question comes, is it worthwhile then to use the pre-cooled system? The answer has to be looked into by seeing that how much increase in the work done is obtained and at the how much increase in the liquid yield is obtained. Generally, it is found this additional work is only about 10 percent of the total work that is not very high increase in the work requirement. On the other hand, the liquid yield increases so much that it offsets the increase in the work requirement. And if somebody calculates the work requirement per unit mass of the gas liquefied, Okay. In that case, it is found that is instead of m, we are putting m f. So, if you put m f, we will find that in this case, we will find the work requirement becomes less for the pre-cooled system than for the simple system. So, this also justifies the use of the pre-cooled system at the increase uh, of some increase in the uh, work done, but at the same time much more increase in the yield of the liquid. So, these are the uh, books you can refer to for further details on these two systems. Thank you.